pleasure to introduce this wonderful presentation, and it's, a, it's specific to the middle school because it's called Engineering by Design as our class. Um, we have a program that the seventh grade participates in and also then the eighth grade participates in, and you're going to hear a little bit about both. And we have two wonderful presenters with us this evening. We have the teacher, which is Mr. Conzelman, who's going to be talk talking a little bit. And then we have Miss Sarah over here who's going to share um, how she's experienced EDD in seventh grade. All right, first of all, thanks everybody for coming out and uh, checking out what we do here. Uh, about, oh well, 2007, if you lose the track of time, it's been a while. Um, I approached my administration and, and said that, you know, I, I think we need a change in, you know, the traditional metal shop, wood shop approach because we weren't hitting a lot of the standards. And uh, I kind of lucked upon this new curriculum that was created by the International Technology Education Association, which is uh, the area that I teach, and it was standards-based. So it was really what I was looking for. I got in at the ground level and uh, got to actually pilot uh, some of the programs. And they flew me out to San Antonio, Texas, and I got to stay on the river walk, and the next year I went to Salt Lake City, so uh, I got to extend my stay a little bit and go snowboarding out west for the first time. Um, so. The, the curriculum starts with uh, seventh grade, and the seventh grade program is called Invention and Innovation. And what we do is we discuss what is technology, uh, a human endeavor that uh, we extend our human capabilities and solve problems and control our environment. And the major projects that they do uh, are based around problem solving assignments. First one's a candy dispenser. And uh, I was supposed to have a student come in and present about that, and they didn't show up. So I'm going to put Sarah on the spot. She didn't prepare this one. So she prepared the, the one on Rube Goldberg. But uh, here's uh, their candy dispenser that they came up with. And it's a problem solving assignment in which they have to create a, a bean dispenser. It's supposed to be a jelly bean dispenser, but jelly beans tended to disappear pretty quickly. So uh, I got hard, dried beans instead. They don't disappear nearly as quickly. Um, and in the process, they've got to uh, take a large amount of beans and then only dispense a couple beans. And the machine has got to, to make the selection. So I would put Sarah on the spot. Can you kind of run through the process that you went and kind of tell them you know, what your first attempt was and why it didn't work. And So our first attempt was about, it was similar to this, but not exactly the same. So we did not have more than one layer of cardboard here. It was just one layer with a hole in it that once you slid the thing, it would, the beans would fall out, which didn't give you the right amount of beans. So then we, we're struggling to come up with a different idea, and and of course my team kept asking for help, but eventually we did figure it out, and we found out that we had to actually put make this big enough to hold the exact number of beans that we needed in order to dispense the right amount. A lot of groups uh, take uh, an approach for the first time, what I call a track door, where they have a container and you're supposed to open it up and then the beans fall. Well, I play a customer that loves beans and I'm going to try to cheat the machine. So in most cases, I'll hold the flap open and tap the side of it and they all just fall out. So the hard part is, is getting it so it selects. And I'll try to tilt this a little bit so you kind of see it. And afterwards, we'll probably have some time you can come up and take a look at it. But there's beans up here tip it too far, it'll spill, but there's a bunch of beans in there. And when you slide right now, at the bottom of it is a hole. And right now the cardboard is preventing the beans from getting down into, uh, you know, and falling out until this slide gets pushed back. And the hole then fills up with beans. But they still don't just fall out. <coughs> it has to come back where at this point, and then gravity drops out, and you get the, the 
it selects the appropriate amount. Um, so uh, Brooke, her partner, uh, kept on coming up and asking me how we do this. We can't figure this out. And it was fun watching their group really struggle to get through this. And um, it was a, a different teaching approach for me in the beginning because I was used to, you know, kids came up and asked me for an answer and I gave it to them. But this new approach was um, an approach where, you know, it was problem solving and they had to figure it out on their own. So now I kind of sit back and enjoy the frustration that they have to go through. It's a lot of fun to watch. So um, that is the candy dispenser. And then I'll let Sarah talk about the uh, Brooke Goldberg. This is the part she actually did prepare for. Okay, so the purpose of making a Brooke Goldberg project is to take a simple task and just make it more complicated by having the movement of an object set off a series of of events that complete the task in which in our engineer by design class we were mainly focused on forms of energy which are potential and kinetic energy and when an object is sitting still and is capable of being set off it, it has potential when that object is moving it contains kinetic energy for example a mousetrap when set up it has a lot of it has a lot of kinetic it has a lot of potential energy. When the trap is set off, the snapping motion contains kinetic energy. This would cause one object to hit another and set that object in motion. This will continue on until the task is completed. And during both projects, they have to keep a journal that documents the process that they go through. You might speak in a couple words about you know some of the experience you had with the uh, journaling. So in the journals, you just basically draw what you're thinking of doing, and you write down what happened in your group that day. And it may take a while, but it does really help you. And you may think that it's pointless, but it actually has a purpose. <laughs> so whenever you're actually drawing the stuff, it's actually helping you a lot with it because you can see how you're going to be planning it. It's sort of like a blueprint of, of your ideas. And once you start building it, then you can sort of like make, like add on to it and like switch whatever you need in order to make it work. Then I want to talk about the eighth grade. Uh, eighth grade is called technological systems, and um, basically, what we do first is review a little bit from the year before what's technology, um, and you know I want to you know tell them that technology isn't just the modern high tech stuff of today. I always joke with them and tell them you know a stick in the woods is not technology, but what if I pick that stick up? and beat a student with it that was annoying me, um, would that be technology? And I said, you know, they go yes, and uh, because it extends my human capability. Um, and technology is growing very fast. In today's society, uh, we just become too accepting of technology, and I want them to think critically about it. So I go into and talk about impacts of technology. And I let them do some research on the internet on where technology has gone wrong and cause society problems. The two main projects are the Lego robots that we do. Um, and it's funny because we get done talking about doom and gloom with negative impacts and then we get to play with Lego robots. Uh, but the, the Lego robots, I talk about robotics and automation take jobs uh, as part of this and then we go into the robot systems. And uh, this is two students and what they're doing is they're uh, first they have to make a program and they go through what's called the robot educator which shows them how to do simple tasks drive forward drive backwards curve turn follow a dark line and then after they're done the basics i give them a challenge so one of the first uh, one of the last challenges they do in the robot educator is to follow a dark line and through the program uh, the robot has a sensor 
and it can sense a difference. And I was hoping to set this up, uh, but in my room I have a white tile floor, and I put electrical tape, which I brought up. But I cut up here, and it's a dark floor, the same reflective <laughs> value as the tape, so I can't really do it. Um, but the program, it, if it senses a less than value, basically it's on the dark line, it turns away from it. And then when it gets onto the white tile, it sees a greater than value, which then causes it to turn back into it. And it just repeats over and over. But I tell them that that's really inefficient. And they need to come up with a new program that will have the robot travel down the line much more efficiently. And they then have to apply the concepts they learn through the robot educator and recreate a program that will work to solve that problem. There's students running the, the program now. This challenge is they have to stay inside of a box. And then uh, I expand from there, where they have to not only roam randomly, but they've got to do paths. So they've got to go back and forth. And then I make the final challenge is a mowing assignment, where they've got to mow the grass in this area, but their neighbor's cat once in a while travels over, and he's a little on the crazy side. So uh, you don't want to run over your neighbor's cat with the, the lawnmower. Uh, so if I put this little figure I got from Burger King uh, on the middle of the floor. If it approaches that, it's got to stop. Then the final project is balsa bridges. And what I do in the beginning of the balsa bridges is they've got to do some research. And once they're done the research, we take some of the concepts we learned. This is a simulation software where they figure out what forces interact with members of a structure. And uh, this program looks at the two that interact with uh, bridges, which is compression and tension. And they've got to see what and how a bridge really works. And they've got to design it. And then we look at uh, the data. And you know, they've got to figure out where they can reduce to save money uh, through the design. After that, we go into a CAD program. And we use the CAD program to create a template. And this is their printout, in which after they have the printout, they use the template to actually create their bridge. And they create two trusses and the deck. When all put together, they get to test it. This is what I call the bridge buster. And this is a bridge that has a board inside that then has a bucket hanging below there, which there's an example. So they're pouring sand into the bucket. And before they do any testing, we weigh the bridge. We'll figure out how many grams the bridge is. And then we compare it to how much the bridge held. And we figure out an efficiency. And they're going for the highest efficiency. And the kids all want, you know, what was the highest weight? What was the highest weight? And I said, that doesn't matter. What matters is its efficiency. And if you have a good design and good construction, your efficiency will be high. So the person who has the best efficiency in the class wins the, the competition. Any questions? Yes. What were the, the two concepts? Compression and what was the other one? Tension. Tension. Thanks. There's four, there's four forces that act upon members. Uh, compression, tension, torsion, and shear. Uh, compression is crushing. Um, I compare it to like stepping on an empty soda can and crushing it. That is, it, it fails under compression. Torsion or uh, tension is the opposite, pulling apart of. And once in a while, I drag I have a little section of rope, and I walk around the room with this section of rope just dragging behind me, waiting for a student to, you know, ask if I've gone crazy, or uh, why are you called, why are you dragging a rope around the room? And I say, you ever try to push a rope around the room? And then I use the concept of, uh, you know, rope is great for tension, but under compression, it's very weak. This is 
is a half year course in each grade, or is it the full year? They're in the class the full we year? We used to have 12 weeks, um, but we're now because of uh, one of the other teachers retired. And for it to work, we had to go to nine weeks, so it fit in with the other practical arts. So it's a nine week course in seventh grade and nine weeks in eighth grade. Yep. Okay. 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 Okay.
each time there's less problems until eventually you become a So you found that you could eliminate things? Yes. I tell them that the first failure is the starting point because you learn something. And I also told him that the uh, famous <coughs> quote from uh, Thomas Edison was, I found out a thousand ways not to make a light bulb. <laughs> so why is that higher? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.